9 Things Successful People Do Differently by Heidi Grant Harvison Get Specific Attainable goals are always specific, because you need to be clear about what you need to achieve. This is the secret of success of high achievers. You also need to be precise and explicit when setting a goal for yourself, like I will lose 5 pounds in 3 months, is better than the vagueness of unspecified number. It applies to all aspects of your lives. Whether it is work, exams, relationships or any other aim that you want to achieve, spell out your goals. This practice allows you to picture your success clearly. Next step is to consider the roadblocks that you may face. Apply mental contrasting which is an effective strategy to consider all the steps towards your success which not only helps you picture your success vividly in detail, it also helps you contemplate all the hindrances. When you set yourself a goal, try to be as specific as possible. This technique encourages you to put everything into action as just dreaming won't make you successful. Reflect upon each action thoroughly and leave no stone unturned. Avoid vagueness at all costs because it prevents success as it allows room to settle for something that's good enough. Do not leave any space for the easy way out. Put everything into practice, get specific. Write down your specific goal. Next, write down how you would know you've been successful. Revisit your goal at this point and make changes according to the new information you have. Consider the challenges you may come across while trying to achieve your goal. Finally, write a detailed description of the positive aspects and also a few sentences regarding the obstacles. With the help of mental contrasting, you will able to determine if it would be possible for you to achieve that goal. With this clarity of thoughts you will be able to plan your next step. Seize the moment to act on your goals. To be successful, you need to seize each opportunity that comes your way. To do this, you need to be exact when setting your goals and make a strategy to achieve them. For example, you need to work out thrice a week. Set specific days and time for doing it. You can assign odd days like Monday, Wednesday and Thursday and write down if it is Monday, Wednesday or Friday, I will work out for 30 minutes before getting ready for work. It has been proven through various studies that the brain responds more quickly to this kind of planning. This allows the chances of success to increase by more than 200%. This effective style of planning that encourages the brain to seize the opportunities at the right moment is called if-then planning. This planning works according to the conditioning of the brain and prompts you to perform certain actions on unconscious levels. You may be aware and intentionally be taking an action but usually it's the unconscious training of your mind that allows you to perform specific actions. For example, your inbox is overflowing and you don't seem to get time at all to sort through it, then plan if it is 4 p.m., then I will sort through my emails for half an hour. The brain grasps this kind of command and when it's 4 p.m. you are prompted internally to visit your inbox. You can apply the same strategy to stay away from the distractions and obstacles. You can write down, if a coworker comes for a chat, I'll spare 5 minutes and then get back to work. Put everything into practice, making if then plans. Identify and determine the action and the time and place. Write down everything starting with if, or when, and moving on to then. This action or decision. Know exactly how far you have left to go. Achieving goals is a long journey and it is important to monitor the steps taken in this journey frequently. If there is no one else to help keep an eye on your progress, then you need to monitor your progress on your own with complete honesty and integrity. It is not possible to let the whole process operate smoothly if you're unaware of what is happening. Regular supervision allows you to make changes and adjust behaviors accordingly. Feedback is an important component of any action strategy. Without feedback, it is difficult to continue performing an action. It affects your motivation to a great extent.
the discrepancy or the inconsistency of some goal is the biggest indicator that some new actions need to be taken. Thus, lack of feedback creates a big problem in the path of progressive actions. It is quite possible that you may be lulled into a false satisfaction and sense of accomplishment when assessing your progress. Avoid this at all cost. It is as harmful as undermining your progress. Be very realistic and honest about where you stand. Focus on the goal and assess how much ground you have already covered and how much more do you need to accomplish. Don't praise or congratulate yourself until your goal is completely achieved. Putting it into practice, monitoring your progress. Set a specific time period for your self-assessments including various trials and errors. Reflect and consider all the information and the resources for assessing yourself. How and from where you will be getting that information. Also determine if you need the help of an expert. Use various tools like alarms and notifications to help you plan and strategize. Think and focus on the goal and how much you need to do more to achieve. Keep yourself motivated. Be a realistic optimist. Being optimistic is a very commendable quality when you are thinking about your goals and achieving them. It is in fact essential to believe in yourself and condition your mind to think positively. You need to believe in yourself and your abilities as it would help you sustain motivation and reach success. However, don't let all this positive thinking get the best of you and move you towards overconfidence. Be pragmatic and realistic. Keep in mind that no worthy goal can be achieved easily. Patience, time and persistence are the qualities that actually help you realize your dreams. Just thinking positively is not good enough. Believing that you will succeed is the requirement of motivation but along with that you have to make your success happen and on that path, you will have to be ready to face many difficulties too. Nurture your realistic optimism with a combination of positive approach and a realistic and honest evaluation of the looming obstacles on your way to success. Instead of visualizing your success, visualize the steps and the strategies that will be required when trying to achieve success. Putting it into practice, be a realistic optimist. Revisit your successes in the past to boost your confidence and also to remind yourself how you succeeded. Whenever you feel that your confidence is spindling down, take a look at the goals you've already achieved and believe in yourself that you can do it again. Focus on getting better, rather than being good. When you set out to achieve your goals, it is a very good and positive sign to believe in the abilities that you already possess. However, it's equally important to believe in acquiring the abilities or the ability to learn new skills that would make you even better than before. The very famous cliché that learning never stops is quite true. However, most of the people usually just try to prove how good and skillful they are. They flaunt the skills, the aptitude and the personality that they've already acquired. This is where the learning stops and the biggest roadblock starts to take shape. Instead of focusing on the goals that can further enhance your personality and skills, the whole effort and attention is centered on proving themselves. Instead of being good, your goal should be to get better than before. This will help you meet all the challenges courageously and you will be able to enjoy your success more effectively. It also allows you to make mistakes and prevent some due anxiety and stress. This in turn helps you make better choices and put in the best possible efforts. Putting it into practice, focus on getting better, instead of being good. Whenever you do a new project or set a new goal for yourself and find yourself on an unfamiliar turf, believe that you can do it. You can learn all the new skills from the experts working in relevant field and you can get the abilities required to achieve that goal. Have grit. Grit is the quality to be persistent and committed towards your goals. No matter what happens and how challenging the path towards the goal becomes, gritty people do not back out. They diligently focus on achieving the goals and take steps that help them move forward. There are many examples all around us of people that demonstrate the true meaning of having grit in every field of life. 
Such gritty people are the ones who invest thousands of hours and practice tirelessly to achieve the skills that can help them realize their dreams. These are the people who are unafraid to stick to long-term goals and they are high achievers everywhere. There are two types of believers. One who only believes in the innate abilities, they believe that a person is either born with certain skills or lacks those innate skills. There's nothing that can be changed about that. The other category is that one who believes that all skills are malleable. The ones belonging to the second type of believers are the gritty ones who succeed in their lives. If you feel that you lack the grit and the persistence, there is no need to worry about it. You can easily learn to be gritty. All you need is persistence, planning and the open-mindedness to learn new skills and abilities to get great. Putting it into practice get great. Take a look at your life. Are there areas in your personal and professional life that you feel need improvement? Answer honestly. Do you believe that you can do something to change the situation or this is your destiny? It totally depends on your belief what can happen to your life. If you think, there's no chance of improvement, then challenge this belief and focus on learning new abilities to pursue your goals. Build your willpower muscle. When you think about achieving goals or the successful people, the quality that immediately comes to your mind is the willpower. This one word plays the greatest role in your life. Whether it is a temptation that you want to resist or practicing the persistence you require to achieve a difficult goal, willpower is required in abundance. However, there are times when it feels as if this resource is depleting. There is nothing unusual about this. Just like any other muscle in your body, the muscle of willpower also tends to become weaker. Nevertheless, the key is to replenish this resource and build up the willpower again. You can build up your willpower through activities that coordinates with your life and the goals you've set for yourself. Any activity where you have to resist your impulses, like denying your urge to eat dessert after dinner or munching on unhealthy snacks should be a part of your life on daily basis. Anything that helps you practice self-control like avoiding smoking and instead doing something else with your hands can help you override the impulses and enhance your willpower. It all depends on your habits what and how you choose to practice resistance. You can also practice this by limiting the time you spend on social media and spending more time with family. Although it will prove to be really difficult initially, with the passage of time, it will become easier and you will be able to master your self-control. Putting it into practice, pump up your self-control muscle. Willpower gets depleted with the passage of time. Give yourself a break before resuming it. Practice your self-control through various activities that can help you override your impulses. Physical workout and exercising your body muscles also enhances your willpower. Don't tempt fate. Having strong willpower is really good. It helps you get the grit and achieve your goals successfully. Nonetheless, keep it in mind that excess of everything is harmful. Believing too much in your willpower and overestimating it can influence you into taking up more than you can swallow. It is quite unwise to sail in two boats at once. Similarly, taking on two challenging goals simultaneously can also prove to be disastrous. Even if you are feeling quite confident and you have complete faith in your willpower and self-control, it won't do you any good to get involved in such a situation. It's obvious that you will end up not doing either one well. Do not tempt faith. Remember. It is easy to resist and keep away from something rather than getting involved in it. Resist the temptation to set too difficult goals for yourself. Whatever goal you set for yourself, you have to resist the temptation of handling another. If you want to get good grades, then resist the temptation to start an entrepreneur group on the social media. It would be better to completely limit your time spent on social media or rather than being tempted and ending up wasting useless time on it. It goes for everything in your life. If you want to lose weight, it would be better to give up the whole bag of chips instead of trying your patience and tempting your faith. 
you may end up eating the whole bag if you are doing some work or sitting with friends. Putting it into practice, stop before you start. This is the key. You need to stop before you start. If you are trying to give up some bad habit, or trying to learn a good one, avoid situations that would tempt you to do the opposite. Focus on what you will do, not what you won't do. Once your goal is set and your plans are made, the next thing that you need to focus on is what you are willing to do. It is easy to fall into the trap of thinking what you are not going to do but with conscious effort, you need to focus on what you are going to do. The if-then plans are great if you are doing something instead of not doing something. The negation if-then plans can actually have an adverse effect and limit you from doing a lot of things that can actually liberate you. The rebounding effect of these plans can actually limit your actions and thought process and become an obstacle in your success. It is important to remember that all your if-then plans should focus on what you will be doing. Instead of a defensive approach, it should be an open-minded approach that can help you explore even the unfamiliar territory. You need to make changes to your restraining behavior and allow yourself to be truly free and progressive. Putting it into practice, focus on what you will do. Analyze your goals. If they limit and forbid you, then you need to change your goals. The goals should lead you to success and not sabotage your progress. You need to rewrite your limiting goal into a doing goal. You need to make changes to your behavior when necessary and replace the negative with positive. What we learned. What was the core message that we got from this book? Attainable goals are always specific. This is the secret of success of high achievers. To be successful, you need to seize each opportunity that comes your way. Achieving goals is a long journey and it is important to monitor the steps taken in this journey frequently. Feedback is an important component of any action strategy. Without feedback, it is difficult to continue performing an action. Avoid being lulled into a false satisfaction and sense of accomplishment when assessing your progress. Be very realistic, honest about where you stand. Being optimistic is a very commendable quality when you are thinking about your goals and achieving them. Keep in mind that no worthy goal can be achieved easily. Patience and persistence are the qualities that help you realize your dreams. When you set out to achieve your goals, it is a very good and positive sign to believe in the abilities that you already possess. Resist the temptation to set too difficult goals for yourself. Whatever goal you set for yourself, you have to resist the temptation of handling another, 